car auctions are always full of surprises, and that's why I'm so enthralled with them. And even though I've bought dozens of cars at auction, I still don't really have one I can rely on. In the past year, I bought this really nice twin turbo 5 series sedan, and it arrived with a locked up engine. So I tried again, this time with the cheap V10 M5, and it came with a spun rod bearing. I went all out with this BMW i8 and it showed up with the blown head gasket. I think it's the right time to take a break from BMW, so I started looking around for something a bit more modest, uh, a Mercedes Benz, and I landed upon this C63S AMG that is in an incredible color combination, has all the right options, it looks like it's in awesome condition, but none of that really mattered. And the over 20 photos of the auction provided, just one stood out to me. Besides this aftermarket wheels, there's really nothing else in the photos here that point to the C63S being anything extraordinary. That is until we get to almost the end here. Photo number 18 is a picture of the trunk. We see the floor mats, and next to the floor mats is a water methanol tape. The only red flag on the C63 is the fact that it's being sold as is, in a red light sale, meaning you can't dispute the car once it's bought. Every one of my problematic BMWs were also as is, but one of the big reasons they'll sell a nice car like this as is is if it's missing catalytic converters. And catless downpipes are one of the most popular power adding modifications you can do to the C63. So I still think this is a worthy gamble. I started doing a little detective work online and ran across this prior for sale ad and I couldn't believe what I was reading. An original MSRP of $116,995. Fully built at Wisetech. $60,000 in mods, upgraded turbos and a built transmission car makes an amazing 850 horsepower now this amg is being sold by a bank and not a dealer which means it's priced extremely fair especially considering all these aftermarket modifications which they probably don't even have a clue about i have to have this car the only thing left for me to do is to secure financing hello hey mom busy oh hi sam no I'm just getting ready for dinner. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. By the way, I just want to tell you really quick about this car that I found at the auction. It seems like an incredible deal. Mercedes AMG, tens of thousands of dollars in modification, just sitting there. I don't think anybody even right. has a clue. How much is it going to be this time? It's an outstanding deal. It's only like 40 something thousand. I mean, look, just round it up to 50. That would be great. Ma'am, I'm meeting someone at Olive Garden. Can we talk about this later? Yeah, Ma, that's totally fine. So I'll just check the account in the morning. I gotta go. Ciao. Ugh. Olive Garden? Who in the heck would she be meeting there? <laughs> Uncle Rich is eating out tonight. This is quite possibly the cleanest, nicest car I've ever bought at the auction, and for good measure, before we get it out on the road, I want to quickly clean it and protect the paint by ceramic coating everything with Avalon King's Armor Shield 9. I love this stuff because it keeps your car super clean by creating a non-stick surface, and it's extremely easy to apply. And because Armor Shield is a true ceramic coating, it makes your car super easy to clean in the future. Bugs, road grime, and dirt just rinse right off the paint. You can also apply it on your car's plastic trim, which restores that deep black shine and keeps it looking this way for a really long time. Now I'm pretty sure I was the first guy on YouTube to ever try out Armor Shield 9. I did it a few years ago on my old blue Jaguar and it turned out incredible. I've been using it ever since and it really taught me there is zero reason to spend near a thousand or sometimes over a thousand dollars at a professional detailer for a ceramic coating when you can DIY it. And right now if you use code SAMCRACK at checkout you're gonna get a bottle of Armor Shield 9 under $50 and if you want to do your windows, all your trims, your headlights and the wheels, well, you can add a second bottle, and the more bottles you add, the steeper discount you end up getting. I'm gonna drop a link in the description box below for the Avalon Kings website. And I gotta give them a huge thanks for making my AMG look absolutely stunning and for also sponsoring this video. Whoever originally owned this car took exceptional care of it. It's an outstanding condition inside and out. And again, the spec that they ordered it in is just perfect. And I want to highlight some of my favorite features, starting with the full blackout or night package. So everything that would normally be in like a chrome trim has been blacked out. And obviously that works really well with the white color. So all the badges, the mirror caps, and again, all the trims, even the tops of the door handles and down here, the rocker trim 
is all black. And then we've got the wheels and tires. Now it's got like a street legal sticky tire on the front and on the back. And these wheels, I'm not too familiar with the brand, but I think that they match the theme of the car perfectly. The back has this carbon fiber spoiler on it. And this is an aftermarket. It's listed on the sticker. It's a factory option. The highlight of the interior, in my opinion, are the sports seats. Those are an option, along with the red and black two-tone and the red stitching. And if you look on the other side there, there's red inlays on the door. There's wood grain everywhere. I mean, again, Mercedes-Benz quality. And then you start to understand why this car cost almost $100,000 new. Right here's the wideband gauge, and you got an amazing stereo, and pretty much every single safety feature that was offered in this year. Now, when we pop the hood, you'll notice there's a gain knob right here. That means somebody had an aftermarket subwoofer in here at one time. There is no additional stereo stuff in the trunk, but there is some wiring to hook it up. And then underneath the hood, there's really not a whole lot that points to anything being super aftermarket with the exception of these little filters here. That's to allow a little bit more noise when the car is coming off a boost as well as these WiseTech blow off valves. Oh, and then somebody also did stick a Brabus emblem underneath the amg here on the air filter covers uh, honestly i'm going to end up probably just removing those now in order to verify we did have the upgraded turbos here i just popped off the air filter housing and i wiggled my camera right in the boot and took this picture if you compare what we saw here to the turbine wheel on wise tech's website this c63 definitely came with the w.3 turbos installed car is absolutely absurd but so is that prior for sale listing i found on it i think there's a few things on it that might be kind of fabricated starting with some of the prices that were in it they said that this car had a hundred and sixteen thousand dollar msrp uh, I don't think you can spec a C-Class anywhere in the $100,000 range. Don't get me wrong, they're very expensive, but I had a friend at the Mercedes-Benz dealer send me the entire spec sheet of this car along with its original for sale price, which was only $88,000. Uh, $88,000 is a lot to wrap my head around when talking about what used to be Mercedes entry-level sedan. The next number, $60,000 in modifications. Now it's clear this car has a lot of money in modifications and Mercedes modifications are not cheap. However, $60,000, that'll buy you, well, it'll buy you a really nicely spec C-Class. I think it might even get you a C43 AMG. Uh, if I had to guess, if somebody went in with this car and had all the modifications done at one time, they probably spent closer to $30,000 and that's including all the labor to install them. The last figure, a figure that can really help sell a modified car like this, the 850 horsepower number. Uh, this car is ridiculously fast. And saying that it has 850 horsepower tells me they're probably just ballparking a crank figure, which is totally fair, but I don't think it's quite 850 horsepower fast. Now, WiseTech's website says that the turbos that we currently have installed are good for another 300 horsepower over stock. This car makes around 500 and change horsepower to the crank stock. So that 850 horsepower figure is in the realm of reality. But for that to be possible, you really gotta be pushing everything to the max. Running things like race fuel, uh, methanol injection, which we have, and just having everything cranked up to the max. And that's when you start to get to the limits of a uh, stock engine, which I'm also pretty sure we have. But then again, there's so much wheel spin in this thing in the lower gears. Maybe I'm just not putting the power to the ground and feeling it. Uh, we're gonna find out those real numbers in a little bit when we take the car to Eurocharge and run it on their dyno. And uh, fingers crossed, the closer it is to that number, well, the bigger of a score we have here, but figuring that I paid like right under wholesale value for this car and it came with all the modifications that were in that listing, I still think I lucked out big time. Before we install the exhaust on the car, of course we can't ignore the fact that Eurocharge is just loaded up with Mercedes today, especially one really unique spec, something I 
I can't even believe they made this. So this is an E63 wagon. And then look at this option, carbon ceramic brakes. Now this is the platform right before my car. So it still has a twin turbo V8. And Shane was just telling me that these things make a lot more torque than my car. Or? Yeah, so not this one specifically. This one made around like 900 foot pounds, but like that one over there, it'll make around like 8, 850 with like 1100 foot pounds behind it. Now your car, well, I don't know about your turbos per se. Yeah, we're gonna figure out what my car makes. We'll see when we get it back on the dyno. Well, yours will probably be, let's say 650, 700 with matching torque, 620, 640 torque, somewhere around there. So I gotta ask you two important questions. First, did you wear that collared shirt and dress up because you knew you were gonna be in the video today? No. I was trying to get like a whole uniform. Okay, <laughs> good, well, it looks good. And then we're gonna put the exhaust on this car, right? You're gonna pause on this real quick or? What you talking about? You what don't know how to do like an oil change in a car? Of course thing? I know how to do an oil change. So then just throw on the exhaust. You saying I'm I can't do an exhaust? I'm in the middle of doing something. Wait, you're saying I can't do an exhaust? We'll throw the exhaust on this car, see what other modifications it has, and then throw it on the dyno. Now the only option I think this car doesn't have, and I don't know if it was available in this year, is the valved exhaust. Usually in the center console somewhere there's a button, you can open it and close it. Well, we're gonna be able to do that now because of the Army Trick valved exhaust system. Not only are we gonna get that, we're gonna get the incredible sound that comes with it. Uh, these things always sound amazing, but my favorite part is that it retains kind of that OEM feel, because when you close the valves, it won't be loud, it won't be droney, and again, just sounds incredible. In just a little bit of time, we've got all of our pipes set in the right place. We're gonna do a final fitment test and snug everything down in a second. But when we took the under panel shield off, we found a little modification here. I don't think this is an M for Mercedes. I think you read it like this, Shane. What does this look like to you? So it looks like you have an extended oil pan from WiseTech. Uh, what this does is it helps for cooling. If you have a transmission tune or if you have clutch packs, uh, upgraded clutch packs inside your trans, um, when you add more as well as having a transmission tune, it creates more heat inside the trans. What this does is it dissipates the heat a lot better and helps with uh, performance later on down the road. But what it also could be is that they just replaced this when they were pulling off your car, your transmission for downpipes. They could have just done it as an aesthetic thing. So there's really no way of telling except for driving the car, right? Does a built trans feel much different than a stock one in these cars? Correct. Well, Shane has built 
one of these transmissions before. I'll let you take it out on the road and we'll see if you think it's got a built transmission or not. Everything's in place. Titan looks beautiful. We're ready to hear what our Army Tricks exhaust sounds like. We just got to do one thing. This is where our factory exhaust flap plugged into, but we have this one provided from Army Tricks. And basically what this will do is not only block it off, make sure no moisture gets in there, make sure that this car doesn't throw any codes because nothing is plugged in. Just pushes in like that and we're set. Go tuck it underneath and let's drop this on the ground. We're gonna take the C63 on a quick test drive. I want Shane to feel the car, see if he thinks it's got a built transmission just by the way the car shifts. Uh, and then he's also gonna get a feel of what sort of power it has. We're gonna give it our best guess, then throw it on the dyno. Before we do, uh, we gotta fill up the methanol tank, something that's been empty since I've had the car. We're gonna use this. This is a hot commodity down here in Florida. This is winter blend windshield washer fluid. According to its safety data sheet, it's 35% methanol, 65% water. It's about $5 a gallon. Now I know a lot of people will say you want to run straight methanol. Some people run a 50-50 blend, but for right now, this will be good. Now as we're driving, I want you guys to take a good listen to the Army Tricks exhaust. Also look at the uh, scared look that's about to be on my face because I can't stand being in the passenger seat of high horsepower cars. And I want you guys to guess down in the comment section below what you think this car might dyno. I'm going to guess, because I've driven it a bunch of times, somewhere between uh, 600 and 650 wheel. I'll come up with a more detailed number when we're on the road. I kind of honestly want to get out of here. Listen, five minutes. I got family. Shane, do you have a family? Yeah. You got that dog in there to go back to, all right? I'm telling you, we're going to be back. Oh, yeah, it's got a build trans. Yeah? Yeah. That clunk into a second. I like this red interior. Listen, let's keep it just the red that is of the leather, not of anything else. Please, Shane. Seriously, this ain't got tires on the back. All right, Shane. All right. All right. Take a nice, quick drive to Mexico. We don't need to go to Mexico. We can stay right here in this area. You felt the build trans. You felt the power. I can't see the freaking heads up display. That was a baby pole. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. I know there's more to this car. We're doing a uh, 45. race mode yep. I haven't heard those it sounds so good with that freaking those downshifts this is the same menu that you would go in for your oil change technically but what you want to do is pull up your trip wherever it's at and then you're gonna go over to here, and then you hold the OK and the answer button at the same time. This was the same problem you had with the black. There, oh, there it is. And then, so technically for your oil change, you would go over to Assist Plus. Mm -hmm. And then when you click on to key position two, mm -hmm. it'll tell you those things, but we're not gonna go in there. We're gonna go over to Dynamometer Test, click OK, and there we go. Cool, so that's turning off all traction aids and everything so it doesn't freak out while it's on the dyno. It's in dyno mode now. All right, let's see what it makes. All 
All right, so our first run, 593 horsepower at the wheels, 537 foot-pounds of torque. That's quite low. You can see right here in the curve where it kind of jumped. That's all wheel spin. So we're gonna do this a second time. We're gonna let things cool down for a second, do it a second time. Hopefully these numbers break the 600 mark. All right, you got all this hooked up here. I'm assuming you're gonna, what, data log the car this next run? Yeah, so because this is like sort of a mystery car in this sense, what I'm gonna do is data log some parameters so it's gonna be stuff like your low time i mean your long time fuel trim fuel uh pressure your boost pressure actual end set point calculated engine torque as well as its set point these numbers will basically tell me what's the tune like if it's actually tuned itself we're questioning if it's actually tuned because of numbers it's almost similar to a stock car just compensating for bigger turbos right now so that's why i'm looking at fuel for the most part as well as the boost pressure targets from here we'll get enough data to make a better conclusion on uh, everything that's going on in this car yeah my only thing is as far as the stock part goes like say they flashed it back to stock my only question on that is car is definitely catless right so if it's catless it would have to throw a check, throw a engine, check engine right light. so that's why I'm sort of not leaning on that side still trying to figure out why it's not making as much power it could just be that it's on a soft tube being that it's a wise tech setup they're not that aggressive on anything so we'll be able to sell after this <laughs> So we got 604 this time and we got 562 foot pounds of torque at the wheels that seems like brutally low for the amount of money that somebody put into this car i think that there's a lot more on the table um shane's looking at the data logging right now let's see what he finds out after looking at the data logs um looking at boost pressure as well as ignition timing as well as fuel those three factors are all on the pretty soft and tame side which i figured um, because of wise tech, them wanting to do the most babyest things, they usually don't pull out the most power. But That's not nice to talk about competitors like that. I'm just saying. <laughs> we have tuned over many of their things and customers are more satisfied. So I talked it over with our tuner and according to the data logs, he says send it. <laughs> um, basically, we can clean up fueling, add a couple more, well, pull a couple more degrees of timing as well as upping the boost and we're more than confident that it should be around that 640 650 ish range this is the part that everyone wants to know even more than the dyno numbers how much does it cost to make this amount of power on a mercedes-benz and this is the guy to tell us because mason is euro charges build advisor so when you call up you're going to talk to him and he's going to spec out a car just like this one or make one with a little bit more power than mine all right all right so the heavy hitter on my car is the turbos. You've got everything priced out, but start with the turbos. How much does my set of turbos cost in particular and how much to install? So your specific car, your turbos, about $5,000. Five grand just for the turbos themselves. Turbos. And this is funny because these are stock turbos. They're modified okay. a little bit. Yep. So really they're just putting in a centerpiece. And then the nice thing is the install is not super expensive on them because exactly. they're right up top. Yeah. So how many hours to install those? Uh, about seven hours to install. Okay, now down pipes. This one, a little bit more labor intensive. Down pipes, yeah, they're uh, eight, nine hours, uh, $1,500 for the down pipes themselves. But again, it's a transmission drop. Pretty much everywhere I've seen in order to install down pipes, the appropriate way and not destroy the factory cats is to, again, yeah, drop the transmission as Mason just said. So that adds a few hours, but you guys have that down pat. I've seen you do it like three or four yeah, times because yeah, I've been hanging around here. It's not tough. What do we have next up on the list? Um, next would be probably the trans build. This is the big one, right? Yeah, which for these cars, they need it. They don't handle over 630 torque very well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where they start slipping a lot. So looking at 3,600 in parts, if you're including the, the upgraded trans pan as well. Yep, which um, we have. Labor is probably the biggest labor on this car is 18 hours on the, the easy side. Did you just wake up? Yes. You got to sell this to them. 
This is $3,500, guys, <laughs> just for a bunch of clutch packs. You're never gonna see them. It's not like shiny stuff under the hood, right? $3,500 for just the clutch discs and all the packs and stuff that go inside. Another, what, three grand to put it all together. $2,500 put it in. $2,500 to put it in. All right, meth <laughs> kit. That's cheap. Meth kit, four seventy. dollars And if you want a meth kit on your car, uh, you gotta come to Eurocharge because it's something that they can do in like an hour. It's easy, it's it's easy it and pretty much hours. every single car with a turbocharger benefits from it. You get a tune on top of it, you're gonna For see sure. really decent uh, power increases. And helps with cooling. And helps cooling. So especially if you live in the south, it's a no-brainer. So meth sure. kit is cheap, insurance, power, and uh, fun. You look a little bit like Zach Galifianakis in the camera. Who tells you that? It's Anybody? Never Nobody? In my life. Just wait till you see the comments on this. Next up would be the wide band. Wide band. So uh, I got a pretty nice one in there. What is that? Yeah, I have no clue. Six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars for a gauge. Six hundred. Jeez. About three hours for installing the meth kit. Yeah. There's typically. A uh, for the wide band. Yeah, yeah, for the wide band. There's a lot of hoses. We showed you some of them earlier to hook up for the wide band because it's reading air fuel, it's reading boost, it's reading a lot yeah. of stuff. So a lot of wiring on that. The other big part we're getting into is tuning. That's huge <laughs> on this thing because yeah. it's got trans and it's got an ECU tune. I already know. See, I'm becoming the Eurocharge build advisor. Look, well, kind of. This setup, you gotta do a custom tune, right? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. And then do you have some off the shelf maps for the C63 if somebody comes in with just like a basic one? Yeah, for sure. We could get you anywhere from a stock car that has nothing done to it to a turbo upgrade monster making 800, 900 horsepower. So. Well, how do I get 800, 900 horsepower? That takes time. $2,500 just for tuning on your car. Okay. Not including dyno time and custom time with the tuner. Yes. That is if somebody said, hey man, I have a car with turbos. I need them installed. I need to tune just so I can drive home. We'll tune it later. Okay. $2,500 will get you that right okay. there. Trans tune. Trans tune, big one. Uh, again, because these cars do not handle power or torque well. $2,000 needed. There's a bunch of limiters in the transmission uh, line pressure. All right, all right. Up. There's a million numbers. How much is the final price? $22,239.86. That's pretty impressive. I'm lucky because I didn't have to pay it. Some other, somebody else <laughs> already paid it for me and I got the car with all the stuff on it. But. There's one big issue and that's I think there's a lot of missing power out of my current setup. Yep. So the question is for all of you guys, Mason, do you think you can get me more power out of this car? 100%. 100%. 100% more power? So we're going to double, we're going to get like 1,200? I have, I'm I kidding. Have, I have one little power lot right now making 100 horsepower more, so. 100 horsepower. Does it have upgraded turbos? 100%. So it's making 100 horsepower more than mine. It's got upgraded turbos. That means we could make 100 horsepower probably. Close enough. What do you mean close enough? You got another one, it's gonna make it. The question is for you guys, this car is already too fast for me. If you wanna see it, come back to Eurocharge, we'll do a full custom dyno tune and see how much more power we can eke out of the C63. Hit the like button and let sure. me know down below. You sound like you hit the like button already. Every time. Okay, good, Every thank video. you. Just remember, call Eurocharge, talk to Zach, I mean Mason, and I'll get you squared away. So what do you guys think about the C63S AMG? I find it strange that somebody would trade in such a nice car to a dealer. It's truly an amazing car, and like I said earlier, it's now the nicest car I own, which makes it kind of strange. I'm always used to putting up with something really problematic, and that's probably why I married the woman I did, but that's another story for another day, and if you want to hear that story, be sure to let me know in the comment section. Even though I'll never tell that story, I can promise you I'll buy another problem car soon, so make sure you follow me on Instagram to see my latest auction buys before anything goes live here on YouTube. And I want to thank you all so much for watching today. I'll catch you very soon. Oh,